Welcome to Her Designs Live, where we talk about money, how to earn more, save more, and lead a thriving life. Hey everybody, today I'm going to share with you how to get paid on PayPal. Using PayPal is one of the fastest ways for you to actually get paid in your service-based business. And so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you the steps to create an invoice. And I do want to reference in case you have not already set up your business bank account, you want to make sure you watch the video on how to make a business bank account. That's a really great video for you to watch. I would love for you to make sure that you watch it after you watch this video. Okay. So to actually create a PayPal business account, it's a little bit different. You need to enter in all the information about your business and it is different from your personal. So assuming that you have already watched my other video, you're going to then go into PayPal after creating your business account, then select on tools and invoicing. Once you select on invoicing, a history of your invoices will appear at the bottom. Because today I'm simply going to share with you how to create an invoice, I'm not going to show you how to manage past invoices. So what I'm going to do from the manage invoices tab, I'm going to select on this blue box saying create invoice. Once I create an invoice, it'll pop up with additional information. In this tab, you'll see that I can update and input my logo. And then I can actually enter in the frequency because I know that this is a one-time payment and fee, or sometimes with some of my clients, it's a recurring fee. I'm going to enter in the frequency just specifically for this example as once only. So assuming you're just sending a one-time request for a payment, you would enter in once only. And then if you'd like to have different invoice here, you can add in different invoice numbers. If you wanted to, you can start at 0001, or if you wanted to start at 20 or 55, whatever the case is, you can change that. The invoice date is the date you generate it. It's automatically pre-populated to be today's date. And then the due date is due on receipt. I am going to say due on receipt because it is typically due the same day that I request the payment. Um, here, I can actually enter in the type of product or service. I'm going to select service, but you can change that. And then I'm going to enter in a new customer. So I'm just going to say that it is myself. And I'm going to enter in my name here. All right. And then I'm going to skip over the additional information here and then I'm just going to select save. You can always save other information such as language preferences, new billing addresses, things like that. Um, but since it's a really straightforward invoice, I'm not going to worry about those things. You can also enter in and change the information of what's going to be shown on the business, um, including your email address. Now here, I'm just going to actually enter in the type of amount and the currency as USD. If it, you're a different, uh, you're in a different country, you would change that to the currency of where you are located. Now for the description of the product or service, I'm just going to say service A. And let's pretend that it was for $1,000. That'd be nice, right? $1,000 right to your bank account. Then you can actually say allow partial payment or allow customer to add tip. I don't generally add in the tip because it's a, a one-time package and fee that I market, but you can always add that in if you would like. I've never done that, but you're more than welcome to. I also like to use this partial payment. Personally, um, you know, if you'd like to add in a partial payment, like let's say there's a milestone you provide 50% of the product or service and you get a 50% minimum. Or if you have a deposit for a photography business, this would be really great. So if you say that the um, package for your photography business is $2,000 and you require a 20 or 30% down, you can just actually enter in the minimum amount due here. Um, I'm just gonna say 50% just as an example. And then you can say, you know, thank you, Sarah, for 
working with me. Please let me know if you have questions. Um, now, this is where a contract would really come into play. It says that you can enter in terms and conditions. I don't really do that because I have a separate contract that I send out and that's a really helpful tip. Uh, I highly recommend that if anyone has a service-based business that you create contracts that provide people with more information on your services. So here you can actually select preview or save or send as draft. I just like to say send. Um, via PayPal just sends it via email and if you want to and you don't want to actually send it via email you can share the link yourself. Uh, I personally just send it via PayPal. I love PayPal and I think it's a great first time you know beginners payment processing system. That's a quick way of how to create an invoice in PayPal. But if you're looking for other types of payment processing systems, a couple of the other ones I really actually love to use include Square and Wave. Personally, I've started to transition to Wave. If you have any questions and if you'd like to see a video on how to create an invoice in Wave, I would absolutely love for you to comment down below. But tell me, was this helpful? What did you learn in this video? And do you have any questions about invoicing? I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas on how to get paid via PayPal. Thanks so much for watching.